If you're opening up your DAW and starting from scratch every time, I highly recommend you make yourself a template that you can pull from. Here's what mine looks like. So my template is everything that I need to get started so I can quickly jump into making music without having to set up tracks and route all these buses every single time. So I've got a drum kit track with my sampler of choice, which is Stephen Slate drums. And I've got these already pre-routed, so they go out to individual tracks, and those all show up right here. So I've got a little bit of a drum mix happening already as a cool little starting point. Then I have a row of about 10 instrument tracks, starting with a sampler track, and I've got Native Instrument Battery on here, really cool sampler, so if I'm doing something a little bit more electronic. I've got a piano track here with Alicia's keys loaded up, it's my favorite piano sampler. And the rest of these are just kind of auxiliary synth tracks, all of them loaded up with Anna 2, really cool synth that I like and pull from often. So those are just loaded up with the default preset um, and I can sort of quickly jump in and start tweaking to make some interesting sounds. I've got a bass guitar track here with Amplitude 5 and the Ampeg B15N loaded up. Then I have two rhythm guitars, both of them also have Amplitude 5, that was sort of a 5150 rhythm guitar tone ready to go. And then there's a rhythm guitar track which just has a flat EQ, a multiband compressor, and Soothe 2, uh, which I reach for often to kind of control some of that harshness. Next I have a vocal recording track that just has a couple of small plugins on there like a de -esser and the virtual mix rack, which has some microphone emulation, some 1176 compression, and a trimmer to control output volume. And that has a send on it to a recording reverb, which is the Abbey Rhodes Plates by Waves. And going into that, I'm just rolling off a little bit of the top end just to kind of control that in the headphones when I'm recording vocals. Scrolling a bit, I have a whole vocal folder here with some routing buses for when we get into mixing. There's a track for the vocal lead and doubles to come together, some harmony buses, some background buses, and even a bus for harmonies and backgrounds in case I need to make some global adjustments, either raise or lower, all of those things at once. Next, I have a whole row of tracks just for vocal effects. I have a few different reverb styles um, that come in different lengths. We've got the uh, Slate Verb Suite Classics, Valhalla Vintage Verb, Abbey Road's Plates again. Um, next, we have some delays of different times. This one's set to ping pong at a quarter. This is the Waves H delay, which I really like. Um, we're using the H delay again much faster, kind of like a slap delay. Fab Filter Saturn, in case we want to do some parallel distortion and a doubler for a little bit of widening and chorusing. So all of these faders start all the way down so we can quickly pull them up and kind of start putting things together and auditioning different kinds of sounds and effects chains. Lastly, I have all of my routing buses, and this is kind of where the full mix comes together. I've got a bus for the drums, the bass, the music, which is, you know, guitars and keys, basically everything that's not drums or bass. Um, we sum those two things together here, this is bass and music. I've got a full instrumental bus and a vocal bus. And these two tracks really come in handy for when we realize the vocals are either too loud or not loud enough, we can just pull the entire instrumental by a dB or so. The rest of these tracks just feed my speakers. This is the main output track, a print track for printing the whole mix. There's a master fader, and I have a speaker's master fader, or for headphones, uh, which just has sound ID on here, which does a little bit of uh, headphone calibration, make sure what I'm listening to is really flat. But none of that actually gets printed to the mix because of how the routing is set up. And I don't wanna have to do that every time, so that's why this template comes in so handy. And I love this because of how familiar everything is. It's the same starting point for me every time. This is my console. It's like if I was sitting down in a studio, I would know where everything is. I would know where every knob is because it's the same console that I work on every day. That's what this is for me. And the best part is it's all chunkable. I don't have to pull in every single track every time I start a new project. So for example, my drum kit mix is kind of a hard rock mix. So if I'm working on something more electronic, I just won't pull those tracks in. But I know I have the battery sampler ready to go on a different track and I can pull that one in. Or if I'm just mixing a podcast, I might only need two audio tracks. So I definitely don't need to pull in all of these things, but I can still pull in my output routing and speaker calibration and just keep it really simple. So I hope this helps save you some time. Have fun making music and I'll see you in the next one.